Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create your very own CSS pill buttons or pill tags. Okay, so this design here is obviously uh, quite popular on many websites which you've probably seen in the past and it's ideal for things like search functions and applying filtering to that search. All right, so it's actually really easy to create something like this using HTML and CSS and we're also going to have the ability to toggle these on or off. All right, so all of the source code is going to be linked down below if you want to download and follow along. We're going to be starting from scratch inside this tab right here to of course create what I just showed you. So going inside the text editor, we're going to begin with an empty HTML body and of course an empty style tag. So the first step is going to be to head inside the HTML and of course create one of those buttons. So we're going to be using a standard button tag for this right here and also give it a class of pill. Okay, now it's important to include a type of button right here because if this button happens to be inside an existing HTML form and the user clicks on this button without the type of button, it's going to actually submit the form. So make sure you have that type of button right there. Then of course include your text, for example, 24 hours. Okay, cool. We're done with the HTML, we can now go back in the browser, do a refresh here, and of course we get something like this. So, heading inside the CSS, let's now convert this into of course what I showed you at the beginning of today's video. So, we can target the pill class. We're going to be setting a font size here of 12 pixels. So, you guys can use whatever font size you want in this pill right here. I like 12 pixels and also whatever font size you choose right here, that is actually going to have an impact on other properties like padding and margin and we'll get to that very shortly. I'm going to also apply a font family here of Ray of Radex Pro and a fallback of Sans Serif, all right? Now we can start including some more things, for example, a padding. I like to include a smaller padding on my top and bottom compared to my left and right. So I'll say 0.5 EM for my top and bottom padding and 1 EM for my left and right padding. So this EM right here just means 0.5 times the current font size of 12 pixels. So basically 0.5 EM is going to evaluate to be 6 pixels. Of course 1 EM just means 12 pixels. So that is what I mean when I said your font size will have an impact on other properties inside this button. I'm also going to apply a margin here of 0.25 EM for all sides. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we get something like this. Okay, let's move forward now to applying a border dash radius here of 1 EM. This right here is going to be crucial to the effect, of course, giving us those rounded corners. I'm also going to apply a border of none and an outline of none because we're going to be using that selected uh, class or that selected um, different styling with the background to of course communicate to the user that it's been chosen as well as a hover class to of course have that change of background color when the user hovers over. So more on that later. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh and we get something like this. Okay. Almost done here, we can apply a background of uh, triple D for a very light grey and a cursor of pointer to of course give that pointer cursor when hovering over. Back in the browser, refresh and we get something like this, okay? I might just fix the spelling on my uh, font right here. It's actually EA, now we're good, back in the browser. And that's all good. All right, so let's now have a look at having that pseudo class for hover when, of course, hovering over. So back inside here, we can say pill. Then we can say colon hover. Do a simple change of background color to be a darker version of that gray. I'm going to use triple C here. Back in the browser, refresh, and we're going to hover over and we get that darker color. So now we come across, or now we're going to start working on um, that selected class. So when the user selects or clicks on your button, we're going to apply a new class to the pill to, of course, give it that different background color. 
So this class is going to be called pill dash dash selected. So let's create another pill here and we can say something like, uh, let's just say top rated as my button text. I'll then give this an additional class here of dash dash selected. So now it's going to have all of the default pill styles plus some more. We'll copy this dash dash selected here, then simply change the background color to be 009578 for the decode green color. Of course, you guys can put whatever you want inside here, as well as a text color of white. I'll save this, go back in the browser, hover over this one, and we have this problem here. So of course, the green is there, but you hover over and you get the hover pseudo uh, class styles from this one here. So to prevent this, we can go back inside the CSS and we can say pill colon, then say not, then say colon again, but inside the brackets here, we'll say pill dash dash selected. So basically this means here, look, for every pill that is not, or that does not have a class of pill selected, when hovering over, change the background color. So now that hover is only gonna apply to the first pill and not the second. All right, so we are all done with the CSS when it comes to these pill buttons. We can now have a quick look, uh, sorry, a quick look at a JavaScript example of toggling those classes. All right, so let's go down here. We're just gonna say, look, for every single pill on the page, let's say when the user clicks on it, we're gonna to toggle the selected class to of course change it from the normal to the green background color. So inside here, we'll say document.query selector all. We're gonna select every single element with a class of pill on the page, then say for every single pill, I'm gonna drop down here and we're gonna say event listener. When the user clicks on a pill, okay, we're gonna run this function here. This function is gonna simply say pill.classList.toggle. We're gonna to toggle the class of pill Okay, dash dash selected just like that. So now if I save this, I'm gonna get that toggle, go back in the browser, refresh, click on a button, and we get that toggle right there of that class of pill dash dash selected. So that right there is how easy it is to create your very own pill buttons using HTML and CSS. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you learned something. If you did, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.